Hey everyone, welcome to this week of MOPA in Focus. I want to thank everyone for tuning in wherever you might be joining us. Since we can't be at the museum, it's an absolute pleasure to be able to bring what I like to think of all the wonderful things from the museum to you wherever you may be tuning in. Uh, for today, we've got a really cool topic. Uh, I think I probably say that for every single week because we've got so many different things to share with you all from the museum. Uh, uh, but this week, we're going to take a look at, uh, as the title suggests, um, looking beyond the frame, right? So typically, we think of photographs as two-dimensional for the most part, um, and we think of them in a frame typically or mounted in a certain way on a wall. But we can see uh, throughout photo history, but especially with contemporary photographers, um, we see them doing lots of different things with photographs. They don't have to be in a frame, in a matting, on the wall. Uh, they can actually take a couple different forms, a couple different shapes. And I think that's a really exciting thing to get to share with you all today. And of course, the spirit of this program is really to take a look at artists that are on view at the museum right now, and since we can't be there, to bring them to you, but also for us to take a look back into the collection of the museum. The museum has a collection of over 9,000 photographs, uh, starting in 1983, uh, Mopa's birth date, uh, and over all those years, almost 40 years of collecting, not only have great examples by fantastic photographers uh, throughout the history of photography, but also different approaches, right? Um, it's, it's a unique opportunity for us to look into the collection and see all the different ways the photographic arts can be used um, to communicate something, right? To communicate an idea uh, and to bring all of us as viewers a little bit more into a story, a narrative, an idea, uh, a concept. And I think that's a really exciting thing. I'm going to go ahead and give a couple minutes here for everyone to, uh, to keep joining us uh, and to be able to tune in. Uh, I want to also give a shout out uh, to, uh, to, to all of our viewers who are tuning in. Thanks, John, for joining us. It's great to have you here virtually. Look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, and thanks again, of course, to everyone who's joined us for these past uh, eight weeks. We've been doing these programs uh, since we're all off-site right now, hopefully staying safe and staying healthy wherever you may be. And I want to go ahead and also make sure uh, that everyone has a chance to check out all the cool resources at mopa.org. Uh, you can go there for the latest information about the museum, uh, as well as some updates that are gonna be coming through. Uh, but also you get to see really cool content. Um, you get to check out online exhibitions. Uh, some of those are based on the exhibitions that are at the museum. Other ones are online only exhibitions, right? So again, taking a look at the collection, putting together shows that you can browse from the comfort of your home that explore a big idea, uh, whether it's documentary photography uh, or whether it's um, uh, unique uses of different photo processes throughout history. So lots of really cool content there. So make sure you check out mopa.org. And of course, wherever you're tuning in from, I hope you go ahead and join us on Facebook and also subscribe to our channel. Uh, you'll get all the latest news uh, and updates and you'll get a little ping when we're doing really cool programs like this. So make sure you go ahead and subscribe and join us on Facebook. And of course, also follow us on Instagram. We're always posting really cool uh, content, activities, uh, updates, views from the museum, as well as views outside the museum uh, from different staff members and all the cool things that they're working on during this time. Hey to Marv, uh, I want to give a couple more shout outs here. Uh, thanks again for joining us this morning, Marv. It's great to have you as always. Uh, and then Mariessa Randall, thank you so much for joining us. It's great to have you. Uh, thanks for tuning in. So as I mentioned today, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take a look at two different artists in particular uh, that go beyond the frame, I like to say, uh, and they create work which is, we could consider it installation-based. 
that's a really broad, broad topic, a really broad uh, concept, but I think it'll make a little more sense when we get into the two different artists. The first artist uh, that really inspired us today is the artist Wang Ningde. And Wang Ningde creates work that is, we could call certainly, installation based. I'm going to go ahead and pull up one of his images here. Um, Wang Ningde is a contemporary Chinese photographer that's part of our current exhibition, Out of the Shadows, Contemporary Chinese Photography. He's one of nine artists on view. Uh, and what's really special about this artist, within the show there's lots of different ways that the artists have used photography. Everything from large-scale camera obscura images to artists that work blending uh, black and white photographs and calligraphy on paper. But this artist, we can really consider it installation-based because it has this really unique quality when you're viewing it in person. Um, and I've got a little bit of video here too to share with you, uh, which because we can't be at the museum, hopefully it gives you a little bit of a better idea of what um, the, the feeling and the mood that it creates when you're in the space to look at these images. So I'm gonna go ahead and full screen this real quick so we can take a look at it. And you're probably see, probably noticing a couple things. We, we have the cl this cloud, this beautiful image, vertical image, but you notice it almost looks like it's made up of all these tiny little boxes, um, almost like pixels. Uh, and there's a particular reason for that. Uh, and the reason is what we have here is we actually have, and I'm gonna bring up a different image here, a close-up of this image. And what we can see is it's actually not a printed photograph in the traditional sense. What it is is it's a series of transparencies that are mounted on a backing board. And those transparencies are at a 90 degree angle, right? They're perpendicular to the actual surface that's hanging on the wall. And those transparencies are these very specifically cut out sections of the original photograph that the photographer took. And what that does is, is it creates this effect that when you illuminate the piece from above at a particular angle, that transparency, just like a lot of our old transparencies that we might have, our slides, it projects onto the surface at a particular angle. So what it does is it recreates the image not by printing it necessarily on paper on a particular surface. The image is actually created by the light passing through this transparency and casting a shadow. And I think that's such a beautiful concept. Um, the, the photographer Wang Ningde decided to do this because um, for a lot of different reasons, but you know, when we take a photograph, we take it out of this wider continuum, right, that we're part of. Um, things like clouds and things like um, a forest canopy or, uh, or a stream of water, um, those things are constantly changing, right? They're constantly in motion. Um, and when we take a photograph, it fixes it, right? Which a lot of times was the whole point of photography, right? We wanted to fix an image to have it um, for as long as we possibly could. Um, but there's an interesting thing about being able to recreate some of that, um, I like to use the word ephemeral, right? It's this, it's this beautiful thing that's constantly changing and shifting uh, over time. And so Wang Ning does approach, right? His process is a way for us to get a little bit of that ephemeral nature of these subjects back in the image. Um, these pieces are illuminated in a very specific way. They actually have their own light source that's mounted at a very particular angle to the piece, um, which helps with the projection of the image, but also when you're in the space with these pieces, which are actually quite large, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're taller than most people are, um, as you move around the pieces, the shadows, the angle changes, um, and it's just such a wonderful experience. The, the transparencies don't necessarily move. They're pretty rigid, uh, although that would be a pretty cool concept, actually, so I hope all of you give, a, give that a try. Um, but again, it has this really unique nature to it when you're sort of moving around the piece, getting closer and getting farther away, um, and I think that's a really interesting thing too, is that 
the nature of the image, what you feel and what you see changes with your proximity to the piece. And so we can also think of that uh, kind of tying back to that big idea of photo installation. What is it, you know, it's, it's, it's not only about what the photograph is showing us and what it's communicating, but it's also inviting us to be participants in viewing it. And I think that's such a, such a cool concept. So of course, uh, like all of our programs in Mopa and Focus, I also like to uh, take a step back and, and have us look at the collection in a particular, uh, along this particular theme. Um, and uh, we'll get back to a little bit more of Wang Ning does pieces towards the end here. And I've actually got a really cool video that shows us a little bit of a, um, a fly through uh, um, looking at the pieces. But when I was thinking about this topic of photo installation, it brought to mind an exhibition that we actually just had not too long ago at the museum, right before the contemporary Chinese photography show, Out of the Shadows. And it was called The Stories They Tell, A Hundred Years of Photography. And that show was very special for lots of reasons um, in the kinds of subjects that it looked at and the photographers that were represented in the show. But also it was really special because it was based solely on the collection of the museum. So we got to take this hundred year sort of snapshot looking at all the different ways photography not only has been used to explore topics over time, um, but also how all of those different things are represented in our collection. And so the artist that it really brought to mind is an artist named Susan Rankitis. Uh, and Susan Rankitis is a photo-based artist, contemporary photographer. Um, and we can see actually right here uh, in this image, um, uh, an image of one of her pieces that was on view. And again, I think, you know, a lot of times when people hear about MOPA or you think about a museum for photography and film, you think of typically photographs in a frame on the wall. And so what was really exciting about this show and to be able to feature Susan Rankitis's piece is that we actually have this sculptural installation that has photographic elements to it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and full screen it here so you can see just a little bit more. This is an image of the piece as it was installed. And you can see it's this um, sort of triangular shape that almost seems to float uh, in space on this pedestal. Um, and it's got a lot of really interesting details towards the bottom in its construction. Um, but the closer you get to this piece, you start to see uh, images. You start to see things that were actually printed on the metallic surface. Um, and those were all printed using photographic processes. Susan Rankitis is really interested in the, um, I like to call it the messy sort of beginning, right? The, the, the messy uh, origins of photography. Uh, I think as she puts it, the alchemy of photography. She's really fascinated with exploring, um, exploring scientific concepts photographically um, and in an artistic way. Uh, and so this piece here, when you get close to it, you actually see these uh, images which almost look like strands of DNA uh, or bits of uh, microbes and molecules uh, sort of floating around on the surface. And then of course, as all installation-based pieces, as you move around it, it's about your relationship to the piece, right? As you're sort of able to walk around uh, the image and to view it from all of these different angles. And again, I, I, when we were doing tours at the museum, which I hope to see all of you at a tour very soon at the museum, a safe tour, um, when you're moving around this piece, it even though it's static, there's nothing that necessarily moves on it, you get this sense of movement, of this fluidity. Um, and again, the imagery that she uses, all of these different um, either photochemistry and then an enlarger or photogram techniques, so uh, coating it with a light sensitive material, placing a negative or some sort of way to expose an image, uh, and then creating the image on it uh, and running it through um, a series of baths to be able to uh, reveal the image for us. Um, I think it's just such a fascinating way to be able to explore these topics. Um, there's nothing, uh, there, there is no law of the universe that says that a photograph has to be 
two-dimensional in a frame. Um, and I think, you know, these are just two artists that have explored this idea. Um, there are so many artists out there, uh, even going back to some of the earliest days of photography, that really looked at how do we print on different surfaces, different materials. And as a photo nerd uh, through and through myself, uh, I think it's also important to remember that in the very beginning of photography, some of the earliest experimentations with light sensitive chemistry weren't always on paper. Um, we're most familiar with the paper processes because, because those were able to be really standardized and systematized for us to be able to recreate images uh, in a consistent way. Um, but there were uh, really early scientists and experimenters that printed on everything from wood to leather uh, to porcelain um, and also sort of played with the three-dimensionality of those surfaces which I think is um, a really cool idea. Um, so photo installation or thinking of photographs beyond just the two-dimensional image in a frame is not necessarily something that's just with contemporary photography. It's been around for quite some time and I think that's a cool thing to remember and to think about especially if any of you are interested in trying something maybe a little bit new or a little bit unique with, uh, with your photography. And so I've actually got a fly through image here of Susan's piece that I want to share with you all. And I'm going to go ahead and actually full screen this here so you can see it really well. Um, this is just a little bit of footage and it gives you a bit of a idea of what it's like to be in this space here. And we can see we're moving through the exhibition. Um, and again, you know, it's such a fascinating idea to be able to print on metallic surfaces on this three-dimensional object um, and then invite all of us as viewers uh, or visitors to the museum to walk around the piece and see um, just how it changes and just how, um, how unique that is to be able to do something like that with photography. So I want to go ahead and also take a moment here uh, uh, to go ahead and remind you all to make sure to head on over to mopa.org to check out all of our really cool resources on photography there. And of course, you'll also get all the latest information about the museum uh, and, and any updates that are coming through. Uh, and then, of course, go ahead and follow us on Instagram and show us all the things that you're seeing and you're photographing. Um, give us a shout out. Uh, maybe you got some inspiration from some of these shows or some of our other shows that we've got going on um, and we'd love to see your shots. I think uh, that's really the beauty of photography is that we get to talk about it but most of us have a device where we can also put those ideas into practice and we can try them out and um, maybe you'll discover something new. So at this point, I want us to go ahead and get on over to uh, the photographer uh, that I was mentioning at the beginning of the program, and that photographer is Wang Ningde, this contemporary Chinese photographer. Um, I just got an update here. Thanks, Janine Donston, uh, for come for joining us this morning. And, and of course, if you have any questions this morning while you're watching the program, make sure you go ahead and uh, and ask those wherever you're tuning in from, uh, and we'll go ahead and try to answer those uh, this morning. I always love uh, being able to chat about photography. I could talk for hours. This program could be four hours long. Um, but I think the really cool thing is to be able to s hear a little bit more about what you're seeing and what you're curious about and then get to address those things today. So I pulled up that, that image that we were talking about just earlier uh, by the artist Wang Ning De. Uh, and Wang Ning De um, doesn't exclusively make photography that's installation based. Uh, while he's a contemporary photographer, he's had a long career in photography uh, and he started out more in photojournalism and documentary photography uh, and then created this beautiful black and white series during a really critical time, a pivotal time uh, in, 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 in history in China um, with really interesting references to all the rapid changes that were occurring in the 1990s and early 2000s in China. <clears throat> and then if we sort of fast forward um, to, the, to, the, uh, to the 2000s, he started with these pieces. Uh, and they're part of a larger body of work called Form of Light. Um, and I love that. That title kind of 
gives me goosebumps um, because, you know, I always like to say that some of the basic ingredients to photography um, beyond equipment, uh, even more important than a subject or something representative in front of the in front of the camera. The basic ingredients are light and time. Uh, and I think probably Wang Ningde would probably argue shadow is also an important part, right? That counterpart to light, light and shadow. And so in the series Form of Light, you know, asking that big question, how, you know, most images, all images are created photographic images in some reaction with light, whether it's the light reacting with our CCD chip that's built into our smartphone, or whether it's light um, uh, reacting with photosensitive chemistry on metal, right? Maybe like Susan Rankitis. Um, and, but Wang Ning Da takes it sort of another step forward and says, okay, I can create an image using light of say these clouds, but then, what is it like to create an image, to recreate it in shadow? Um, and again, getting back to those concepts, that concept of that projection, right? Uh, and I'm gonna pull up that image again here real quick, just so we can take a look. And I'm actually gonna full screen it here too, so we can really see a close up. Um, and you can see the angle that the shadow is falling at. And again, that's a very specific angle so that when we step way back, we get to see the actual piece um, here. And this image, right, a canopy, sort of this wonderful thicket of forest. Um, in fact, I think the title is Thicket. Um, and uh, these trees, uh, but then the closer we get, we notice that it's actually made up of all of these different small bits of transparency uh, that recreate the image for the eye. And I think that's a really fascinating thing because it also kind of speaks to photo technology, right? We've all had the experience of maybe trying to edit one of our photographs a little too much and we see it's all pixelated. So we know that images are made up of uh, digital images of all of these small squares, these pixels. Uh, and then from the farther away we get from it, the more it coheres, right, into this image that we see. So again, that relationship with the viewer. And again, I think, you know, those big broad ideas that uh, Wang Ning Da is trying to invite us to consider are really the ephemeral nature of some of these subjects, right? Um, here we have one that looks mostly black and white, um, and it it's tree branches. Um, and so they're all natural subjects uh, in the images that we have at the museum. He's done a few of these series uh, within this series that have featured portraits and people. Um, but I think really that big concept of uh, that he's engaging with, right? These things that are constantly changing and constantly fluid. Uh, and when we take a photograph, we're sort of taking it out of its context, right? We're arresting it, we're fixing it. Um, but how do you create an image that imparts a little bit of that ephemeral nature back into the image? Uh, and what a beautiful way to do it uh, than with uh, this wonderful style of installation where you can have these transparencies projecting these shadows. Here's another image that I was able to pull up um, that shows the surface of water, right? Um, and again, with the way these are illuminated in the museum, typically in the museum, we have what we call the cans, right? Um, which are those fixed lights that we can kind of adjust uh, and point to really highlight the works. These works actually came with their own specific lights that are mounted a bit closer to the piece, just above it, so that it throws the angle at just the right way. It casts that shadow at just the right way. Um, so what's really fascinating is that if you were to turn off that light source uh, and you were just to look at these pieces um, illuminated evenly from the front, it would actually look like a blank white canvas or a blank white background with all of these tiny dashes, right? And those are those transparencies that are jutting out at an angle. And so it's really fascinating. In fact, the first time I saw these pieces was when they had come into the museum uh, and I popped downstairs with our exhibitions team uh, and 
it was wild because it's just sort of this blank white surface with all these dashes. And then as you get closer and you move around it, you start to see those are the transparencies. And then once you illuminate it from just the right angle with just the right intensity of light, suddenly the image appears. And that is, again, such a magical thing. And really, I think, too, um, the beauty of working with something that's a bit more... Uh, three-dimensional, a bit more beyond uh, beyond just your typical two-dimensional photograph. I've got a little bit of video here too that I want to go ahead and share with everyone that I'm going to roll on screen where you can see not only the pieces that we were just talking about this morning, but then also we'll be able to pass a little bit closer. So there are the pieces and then you can see in the upper corner um, towards the top of the frame those are those special light sources and then you can see how at the edges it kind of bows out and buckles out uh, the shadow being projected. Really really cool work, really fascinating. So I wanna thank all of you again for joining this morning for MOPA in Focus, and for all of you who've tuned in through over the course of these few weeks, uh, actually the course of about two months here. Um, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a break next week for the holiday. Um, so a big shout out uh, on Memorial Day uh, and to honor all, uh, all of our, uh, those in armed services uh, who, um, uh, who are no longer with us today, um, but made sure that we could all be here, which is a really special thing. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a break next week, um, but make sure you stay tuned. Check out all of our content at mopa.org, of course. Uh, uh, and then also uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and join us on Facebook because even though we're taking a break next week uh, from this show, uh, there's going to be a lot of really cool stuff coming out and to check out. So I hope to see you all there. Uh, and of course, I hope to see all of you again for another program. In the meantime, stay safe. Stay healthy, uh, and we look forward to the next program uh, 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 and for another MOPA in focus. Take care, everyone. <laughs>